So if you clicked on this video, you're probably thinking about DaVinci Resolve. Whether you're a beginning video editor, you've never touched it in your life, or you are a seasoned veteran and you would like to consider the tool that is being tossed around the internet by a bunch of different creators. I basically screwed myself over by deciding to just jump ship Premiere and just import everything into DaVinci. Goodbye Adobe, three big reasons why video editors are switching from Premiere Pro to DaVinci Resolve. I recently switched over to DaVinci Resolve. Straight up, Premiere Pro is the reason I lost my spark and excitement in video editing. Should I use DaVinci Resolve? Should I use Adobe Premiere? Final Cut? What should I use? Today's video, I'm going to share with you a couple of reasons why you might want to consider DaVinci Resolve. Without getting too far into the weeds, I started video editing when I was about 15 years old. All I wanted to do at the time was make dumb video game videos of my gameplay in World of Warcraft, Call of Duty, Battlefield, whatever else. And you can find that on this YouTube channel where I made some ridiculous videos of my World of Warcraft gameplay. Since then, I have turned video editing content creation into a profession where I do make money creating content for social media, for the board game industry, making ads, making YouTube vlogs, making event videos. I've even shot some weddings. I kind of just experience everything and it all comes back to being able to communicate. Communicate an idea, communicate a visual story, and the way you do that is with video editing software. Now, it doesn't matter what tool you use. You could keep using Final Cut Premiere, Sony Vegas, which is what I started on, or consider switching to DaVinci Resolve. There is no right answer on which tool you should use to make content. The most important thing is to commit to one and try to learn and dedicate a little bit of time each day, each week, each month to getting better at the skill because it's not about learning the software, it's about being creative and creating things and getting better over time. Unfortunately, when it comes to creating things, we have to spend a little bit of time learning the technical stuff, learning what buttons to press and in what order so then we can actually do the thing, make the thing. So with all of that out of the way, here's the reasons why I switched to DaVinci Resolve. The first reason why I switched to DaVinci Resolve is that it uses a database saving system. Without going too far into the technical details about this, whenever DaVinci Resolve crashes, it will pick up exactly where you left off the way it saves. Rather than having to rely on the last time you saved or the last time the software auto-saved, DaVinci Resolve saves every single time you hit a button. So then if you do experience a crash in a more complex project, there's no loss of time which is something I really like as someone who does professional content, but even if you're just getting started and you hit a button and you make a mistake and it does crash, you're not taking steps back and be like, oh, I, I am so lost now, where was I? Sort of thing. The way DaVinci Resolve saves is a lot more conducive to making sure you don't lose work. The second reason why I like DaVinci Resolve over other video editing tools is that it is typically more optimized to handle footage from all different applications. I use a Sony camera and I can take this footage, drop it on a timeline and just view it no problem. But in other software, it might chug or be slower. On top of that, DaVinci Resolve ends up rendering faster as well. And in today's day and age where content is king, we have to turn stuff around super fast being fast is super important. The third reason why I switched to DaVinci Resolve is that the color grading tools ends up being more intuitive. Now, if you're a previous user of other editing software for photos or video, you'll know that it's in layers. So you put effects on top of each other until you get the desired look. In DaVinci Resolve, instead you use something called nodes, where nodes is a left to right reading math problem basically. Because every single time you change a color effect on your footage or a photo, you're basically just changing numbers. You're changing values of pixels so that you could get some desired look. You can make something brighter or darker, less saturated, more saturated, more colorful, less colorful. Long story short, DaVinci Resolve ends up being more intuitive because it's basically reading it from left to right and we can think about it like a math problem. 
Fortunately, there is no math, and you don't really need to worry about that unless you're a hyper-advanced colorist, but the reason why I like the color grading tools in DaVinci Resolve for beginners is that it's a lot cleaner, and there's a dedicated tab deliberately towards color that you can just play with your color grading settings there. Now, the most beneficial thing for me in DaVinci Resolve as a colorblind artist is the ability to work with large color profiles such as Aces or DaVinci Wide Gamut, which I know I'm getting super technical, but hold on just a second. I'm a colorblind artist, and I do not want to have to rely on my eye to get the desired look that I need. Whenever I film footage, it's going to look like this. It's going to be shot in this flat, gross profile called Log. But Here's the thing, with DaVinci color grading tools, it does a lot of the stuff on the back end for me so that I could get the desired look. Sure, you could use something called a conversion LUT where it basically takes your log footage and it applies a LUT to make it look normal, but even with my colorblind eye, I can see that these LUTs aren't quite the look that I want straight out of camera. But with some of the DaVinci based tools, I can actually get the look that I want out of camera with their system. Unfortunately, this system, such as Aces, is not in Adobe Premiere as of the time of this recording. So with all that said, I really like the color grading tools in DaVinci Resolve because it helps me as a colorblind artist and I feel like it's a lot easier to work with, especially for beginners because it's just in a single space. And hey, if you don't wanna do any color grading, you can just skip this process entirely. The fourth reason why I do appreciate DaVinci Resolve is that everything is in one place. I don't have to learn Adobe Audition and then Adobe After Effects for my motion graphics and Adobe Premiere. It's all in one piece of software. Now I will say that you can do some motion graphics in DaVinci, you can do some audio editing in DaVinci, and you can get really far with it if you use the DaVinci native tools. But they're not going to be as robust as dedicated tools such as let's say motion graphics. I still use Adobe After Effects for my motion graphics work because it is just a lot easier to animate text and type and stuff in Adobe After Effects than it is DaVinci Resolve's solution, which is Fusion. To put it really simply, DaVinci Resolve can do everything that you need to make a full video production between editing and then your audio and then your color grading and then your motion graphics. But if you need to do something super specific and super stylized and a lot more intense and involved, I personally don't think that Fusion or Fairlight or whatever the tools in DaVinci Resolve will be the solution for super highly advanced things that you might need. But for basic social media content, having a single application that can basically do everything, plus a little more than Premiere, which is its direct competitor, I'm pretty stoked about the fact that DaVinci Resolve is just a single piece of software that I can learn and I can spend my time editing and then have a section dedicated to color grading and then have a section dedicated to my motion graphic stuff. It makes it a lot simpler and while it might not be as robust, it really f encourages me to focus on the story rather than tunnel visioning on this motion graphics thing that I might be trying to make in After Effects. Now we need to address the elephant in the room and the fifth reason why I do appreciate DaVinci Resolve is that it is free asterisks, quotation marks, etc. There is a studio version and it does cost somewhere, I think it's $300 internet can solve that problem for me and you can look it up. But it does cost money for the studio version, which includes more professional tools, more advanced techniques and stuff, but in the modern age, sometimes you don't need all of those things. If you're just dealing with phone footage, this is all you need. You need a, a, your phone and a way to edit the footage from your phone. So long story short, it is free. And if you're just getting started, I find that super palatable because Sometimes a 30 day trial is not enough time to get started and learn how to make stuff. And on top of that, if you're trying to make content for a business, spending money when your new business idea is not making any money is a hard sell. Now, the reason why I'm making this video is a very exciting thing. And if you go to the link in the description down below, I have officially released my first public teaching course. Well, it's actually not officially public as in like we're gonna be meeting in a school or something. It is an online course that I have created and it is intended for beginners just getting started with video editing, content creation, etc., and experienced users who have done video editing in the past, but they're switching from one software, Premiere, all the way to new software, DaVinci Resolve. This is the first course that I have created because I have felt that in the modern age, the most important thing is not being able to learn 
Cinema 4D, Blender, Maya, Unreal, etc. It is communication skills, and communication in the modern age is typically done through video. It's a lot easier to watch a video than send someone an article and have them read it, because that takes attention and effort. But if you're watching this video, hey, thanks for spending some attention with me, and I hope you do take a second to check out my course. How much does it cost? $20. In fact, $20 is gonna be the price that it is going to stay forever. Because the intention behind this course is that you are taking me to lunch when you buy this course. I generally like sharing the stuff that I learn online. And the reason why it is a $20 course is because I want you to think about it as in you're taking me to lunch. Hey Jags, can you help me learn some video editing stuff? Sure, no problem. And normally I would say yes, but I would say, but would you mind just door dashing us some food or something? So while we're going through a, a tutoring session, you, we just get to eat something fun together. So when you pay $20, you're basically buying me a Chipotle bowl. So with all that out of the way, let me just sum this up really quick. I have switched to DaVinci Resolve for all of my video editing needs, but I still do more advanced 3D animation, motion graphics and stuff for my clients. But I do a lot of my work in DaVinci Resolve now because basic stuff in YouTube or social media ads, I will start it in DaVinci Resolve and I'll always end it in DaVinci Resolve because at the end of the day, if you are trying to make content, starting in the more advanced stuff is a fool's errand. You're gonna spend more time fussing with more advanced things than just like being limited to what you can do in a basic video editing timeline. So whether you're just getting started with video editing or you're an experienced content creator, I made this course to be a supplement to an artistic lifestyle, so to speak, where we need to be able to communicate and the easiest way to communicate an idea nowadays is video. And I hope that this course will hopefully help you learn how to make some stuff so you can share more things on the internet in the same way that I like to share things on the internet. So with all of that said, link in the description down below for my course. And if you would like to learn more, please feel free to hit me up and I will happily answer any questions that you might have, but I will leave it there. and. I will leave it with the final tip, and that is to eat one gram of protein per pound of body weight. You'll make some. Goodbye, my friends. Bye. Bye, 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 bye. Bye, bye.